We'll move on though, Lynchy. I'll start with you for the team selector and, and we'll go through each of our, our Liverpool teams. I think Alisson, we're expecting him to be back, obviously missed the game midweek through illness, assuming he is back, he'll be in goal. But the real interesting question, I think, is, is how you line up that defence. I think, obviously, Robertson and Alexander-Arnold are fairly obvious, but those two in the middle could be could be interesting for Jürgen Klopp. Yeah, I, th- I think he's going to win on the side of the caution. He, he did suggest to me today that there's a possibility that the centre half signings could be involved. But I, I just think he's going to win on the side of caution and, and go with Henderson and Fabinho back there. I think obviously we think that Fabinho is going to be fit for this. So I think putting the, the two midfielders in there is is probably the way he's going to go. And, and then, you know, just hope that that's enough to get him through. I think they've, they've both impressed there, haven't they? So I suppose it's not even chance in it, really. It's. Um, they, they probably deserve to be selected on form as, as Liverpool's best centre half pairing at the moment. So, um, yeah, I think I think that's the way he's going to go. Yeah, Fabinho back from injury as well, Gorsty. We think, or we assume at this point, that it's a, a good chance for for him to come back in. Would you go with Fabinho and Henderson, or is there any argument at all? Do you think to to throw in one of these two new boys? I mean. It, it's a difficult one, isn't it, in terms of making your home debut. There's, there's probably not a, a tougher game to, to do that in than, than a visit from Man City. So that's why I'd probably err on the side of the caution um, against starting either one of them. But I'd, I think for Fabinho now, I think we just have to accept that he is a centre-back, don't we? So if he plays, then he's centre-back, as, as uh, frustrating as that might be. But uh, he, he's, he's had a great season, really, as a centre-back. So uh, if, he, if he's fit enough, then, yeah, I'd, I'd be playing him and... I probably would just err with on the side of caution and, and throw in Henderson ahead of um, Ben Davis. Yeah, I think I'm going along the same lines. And, and with that being the case in midfield, then it, it makes it slightly easier. There's not so many options to make, is there? I think I'm going to put Curtis Jones in over James Milner. I think Milner has just played too many matches in a row yeah. now and, and looked absolutely knackered. Would you go along with that, Lynchian, and, and therefore have what? Wanaldum, Thiago, and, and Curtis Jones, perhaps? Yeah, I, th- I think it is time to, to call on Curtis Jones. I, th- I thought, I, I was really surprised, to be honest, to not see him in the starting lineup against Brighton. And, um, you know, he's played well whenever he's been brought in. Milner must be very close to sort of the red zone, given his age. And obviously, he can occasionally pick up those muscle injuries. Whenever he's sort of got one, it's when you thought, yeah, I'm surprised he's still in the starting 11 when he's been in it for quite a few games consecutively. So I think you've just got to be really you know, careful with him. You don't want to lose another player to injury. So I think Curtis Jones, you can back him to come in and, and do a sensible job in there. He, you know, he's really switched on defensively these days. And then you've got Milner as an option there. He's versatile. He can come into different sort of situations and he'd be a really good option off the bench. So I think, yeah, I think that three is is the one I would go with. Nabi Keita there as well. We think Gorsty, I think he's back in time. Alex Oxlade Chamberlain an option as well, but both of those players sort of come with their own risks, don't they? Yeah, full out for me. I'd, I'd, I'd go with Curtis Jones as well. I was shocked that he never played against Brighton, and I was even more shocked that he didn't get on earlier than he did. Um, I mean, Milner. I mean, if, he's he's a he's a fantastic squad player, isn't he? For his, his experience and his know how, but I think with the injuries that he that Liverpool have had, he's kind of been overplayed and. It's um, it's just had a little bit of a. He, he hasn't been a standout player. Let, let, let's uh, perhaps put it that way. But um, for me, Jones has to play. He, he's one of the, the few in this Liverpool squad. Maybe only him and Cater actually who are prepared to to carry the ball and, and take people on and try and bring defenders out of positions because teams kind of let Liverpool have the ball in front of them, especially at Anfield, and, and they just say break us down. And Liverpool for all the passing and. Uh, the crossing and, and whatever else they haven't been able to do that you know you've seen Liverpool can open teams up when um, Jones is prepared to have a run I'm thinking about the goal against Tottenham um, the first one you know not Salah scores it but it kind of opens up because Jones has a dribble into the heart of the defence and then again against West Ham um, Jones it, it was his run that opened up West Ham for the for the space for Salah to shoot wasn't it so um, I'd, I'd be putting Jones in ahead of Milner and Thiago and Wijnaldum kind of um, get to Continue their their roles as well. I wonder. I wonder actually whether, in in light of what Jurgen said today about sort of he, he didn't like the this the speed of passing and stuff, is that you know whether he regrets slightly not using Jones against Brighton. You know, having those fresh legs in the middle and, and the ability to sort of pick up pockets of space, and also you know he's got a really nice pass on him to find in other players. I think he might slightly regret that one. I think that's why I sort of see him 
maybe looking to put it right against Manchester City and thinking having some freshness in there and his sort of youthful enthusiasm might really sort of give Liverpool a, a massive lift in there. I think that there's been an argument that without Milner in that midfield and without Henderson as well, there's maybe a lack of leadership in that midfield area. Would that be a risk at all, do you think, Lynch? Or do you think that's sort of, not a myth, but but maybe over-exaggerated with the fact that, that Henderson isn't there? Um, I think I think you miss Henderson's, you know, the, the, we, we've seen the videos, haven't we, the talking and the, the way he encourages players and he sort of switched on to what everyone's, everyone's job is, is at every moment of the game. And I think having that in the centre of the park maybe, rather than a little bit further back is, is possibly quite helpful. But and, and I think that's possibly why he wants Milner in there is, you know, he's the vice captain. And, and, you know, if you don't have Milner, then if you don't have Henderson in, then it's great to have Milner in there. But I think, I think sometimes, you know, you've just you've got to think about the, the impact of other things. And this is this is what it's like for managers, isn't it? Constantly balancing, you know, several several considerations at once. And I think, you know, like we said, the, the, the legs issue here with, with Milner is, is probably sort of outweighs what you're talking about in terms of having vocal leadership in there. And I think you probably get more from Curtis in this game, even though, you you know, you might have to give up having that that vice captain in the, in the centre of the park. I mean, there is. We touched upon it, didn't we? There, there is always the option that he goes and pushes Henderson back in there, and, and maybe says to Ben Davis, "Just have a go at this." Then you've you played, you faced Man City before, and you know he has Fabinho alongside him, say because whoever is going to be Ben Davis's partner or Kabak's partner, if he's the one who's chosen, it, it will be someone they've never played with before anyway. So it's you know, I suppose it, it's not, that's not going to be sort of something to worry about, is it? It's, um, so maybe, just maybe, you would think about that for this game, just to get Henderson back in midfield. But I think I still, I still sort of fall on the side of what we said, which is, is to yeah, throw Curtis in there, get some fresh legs, and, and maybe Milner can come on late in the game and, and hopefully change things or see out a, a four 0 win. <laughs> yeah, I think that might be a, a little bit optimistic, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good to, to sort of have these conversations and, and have these options, isn't it? I suppose that's sort of facilitated by the fact that there are a couple of centre backs at the club. But I suppose. The one area of the pitch where you wouldn't want to make a change is, is up front. Sadio Mane, we think, is back and he presumably will be up there with Firmino and, and Salah, Gusti. Yeah, yeah, you guess so. I mean, um, the kind of reserve list isn't exactly um, a stellar cast at the moment, is it? I mean, I mean I was obviously gone to Southampton. Uh, Diogo Jota, the big one who, who continues to get himself fit. And then Divock Origi, who, uh, who sadly it looks like his days could be numbered. Uh, come the summer and Anchi Kedi who's not played a lot of football who hasn't done too badly to be fair to him but um, yeah I mean Liverpool's front three um, remains kind of um, the, the, the the big guns aren't they and, and it, it, it's just a real shame that Diogo Jota did get that injury because when you've struggled for an impact player off the bench or you know even just the ability to, to rotate here and there they just haven't really been able to do it I mean Origi started that game against Burnley didn't he and who knows what happens if he goes and puts that one in towards the end of the first half, but he, but he didn't. But if you think if Jota had been fit and Jota would have started ahead of a week, it just gives you a lot more confidence in um, in the fact that Liverpool can go and score because you know, they, am I right in thinking they haven't done that since West Brom still at Anfield? Um, that, that's going back to 27th of December. So, um, yeah, I mean, let's just hope that um, Sadio Mane is back and, and firing on all cylinders. Yeah, Jota, of course, played a big part at the Etihad as well, didn't he, in that 4-2-4 formation from Liverpool. But not really on the table, is it, this time, Lynchy? I think we we just have to assume it's going to be a 4-3-3 because Minamino no longer at the club and and Origi, as Gorsty says, just not quite performing at at the right level at this moment in time. Yeah, that's it. I just don't think the backups have have got any case to sort of start in this one. If you can can get the front three together, then you, you, you have to do it, I think. You saw Shakiri sort of pushed out wide against Brighton, and I just don't think that works at all. I think if you're going to use him, and we saw this at West Ham, is when he gets into central areas and he can pick up passes, he's got runners ahead of him. I think that works. Um, funnily enough, actually, I don't think that works so much when he's got Firmino in front of him because Firmino likes to come into those deeper areas and they, pick, they end up picking the ball up in similar positions and, and having no one in a central position going in behind. So, unfortunately for Shakiri, the best sort of configuration and attack for him is to sort of be in a 4-2-3-1 in a central position with Origi maybe ahead of him rather than Firmino so and he doesn't seem to fit in out wide so I just think yeah there's there's, there's no case to be made at all really to, to start anything but the, the main front three. 
Yeah, no, in complete agreement with you there. Just before we finish, we'll do our, our match predictions. I'm going to go for a, a one-all draw. I know it's not the best result in the world for Liverpool, but just think if it gets to that 60-minute mark and City are level, I think they will probably just shut up shop and, and take that, to be honest, given the buffer that they have at the top. Gorsi, are you any more optimistic that, that Liverpool could win or are you going to go along similar lines? Yeah, I think so. Unfortunately, I mean, um, I normally rival Mark Lawrenson for for the for guesses and saying Liverpool are going to win anything, but uh, it's difficult to to make a case against the team who are coming into it with thirteen straight wins, uh, top of the league. The pool have obviously got the massive injury list and no supporters. So um, yeah, I mean, it, it it'd be great if if they could kind of give themselves a massive shot in the arm with with a win, but I think. Um, I think a draw is, is the realistic one, yeah. And then, Chief, what are you going to say for it? I, do you know what? I think I think with it being Manchester City, I think Liverpool are going to be bang up for it. You know, fans aren't in, but it's still Anfield. The familiarity, the areas on the pitch and things like that all play a part. I think City, you know, defensively a lot better this season. But I do think there's a possibility when Aguero isn't in their side that you can stop from scoring. I think, you know, I, I'm not massively convinced by Jesus still, still. And I know his goal record at City is absolutely ridiculous, to be honest. But when I saw it the other day, I was surprised because I don't think he's a top-end quality player. I think the way City plays sets him up for tap-ins quite a lot. And obviously, you've got to get there. But I still don't think, you know, if they were relying on him for any period, I don't think he's he's that level, that you know, top, top level like Aguero. So I think... I'd say, you know, back Liverpool to maybe get a clean sheet. I think it's you know whether the front three can get firing. I think possibly City will will you know maybe hopefully take them slightly lightly and, and and maybe that will open up a few spaces to Liverpool and they can maybe sort of score one early and, and score one late and get two 0 win. Oh, very optimistic. I think I think you're right on on Gabriel Jesus. To be honest, I think since he signed for Manchester City, he's in terms of expected goals, performing 15 under where he should be. So, I mean, that is you know, not even really an average striker in terms of finishing. But, yeah, certainly you know, Jurgen Klopp and, and Liverpool could do with him missing another couple of chances, I, I think, at, at the weekend. But that just about brings us to the end of today's podcast. We'll be back, of course, with the next Blood Red podcast on Monday. Looking back, hopefully, at a win for Liverpool. But for myself and Gorsty, more likely a draw. We think plenty more to come before and after that match, of course, as well, too. For now, though, from myself, Matt Addison, from Paul Gorst and from David Lynch. Until next time here on the Blood Red channel, thank you for watching and listening and goodbye for now.